Start a new section. We're going to call this multiple allele traits. Uh, we kind of covered this a little bit the other day. Uh, so this will be kind of a little bit of review, but we can officially write some stuff down, and that will help us out. So uh, if we want to define that, we could just say these are traits that have more than two alleles. So most everything else we've looked at has just had two. It's either had a dominant or recessive, or like a codominant and incomplete dominant. Yeah, they had three phenotypes. They had that mixture, but they still only had two alleles. So some examples of this. Um, obviously, what was one example we talked about? All right, human blood type is one example, but also uh, human hair color, uh, eye color is, those are some other good examples of multiple alleles. If you think about eye color, you've got lots of different types of eye color. You've got blue, you've got brown, you've got gray, yellow, hazel, um, green. Height's going to be something, later we're going to talk about what we call polygenic traits, and that, those are traits that are governed by multiple genes. That's like skin tone, uh, height, your, your body size, those kinds of things. So the example we're going to use is we're going to use uh, blood type. In humans, and what did we say the other day was the... Uh, were the alleles for blood type? A. All right, there was type, there was A, B, B and o. o. And we said another way to represent those was using eyes. Capital I with a uh, superscript A for the A allele. Capital I with a superscript B for the B allele. And how did we represent the O? Lowercase I, right. Because O is recessive to A and B. But A and B are what to each other? Codominant. Codominant. Will you have us to memorize that? Or? Yeah, it's not that hard. Uh, so these are the alleles. Now, these are not the blood types. These are the alleles. So the blood types are, what's one of the blood types? Type A. All right, we have, we could be type A, and there's two ways to be type A. How could you be type A? Well, not in terms of that. A dominant and A a, B, and A, B, O. How about you can be homozygous for A or you can be heterozygous for A. So that's how you can be A because A is dominant to O, right? Um, you could also be, what's another blood type? Type B. All right, type B. And how, what are the two ways to be type B? Homozygous, B, B, or heterozygous. All right, you could be homozygous or you could be? Heterozygous. I want that put in there. Type, you could have a B allele and an O allele in your type B. You could have AB. All right, that's another blood type, is type AB. And there's only one way to be type AB, and that's to have an A allele and a B allele. And you could be recessive as I. Right, we could be, we could be type O, which is, type O is recessive. These are the genotypes, correct. These are the genotypes. There's no real phenotype for those, is mm -hmm. The phenotype is type A. Oh. So like if I'm type A, that's oh, my yeah. phenotype. My genotype could be homozygous or heterozygous. Yeah. Okay. Now as far as if you're A positive, A negative, that's a separate deal. Um, so I guess this is part of blood type. I think on the end of course exam, this is all you're going to see. I don't think you're going to see like A positive and A negative and all that. Uh, but I do think it's something good to know. Uh, just because I think you ought to know about blood types, in particular your own. So the other thing we can have is what we call the RH factor. And where did we say that got its name? Something about the monkey that they tested or something like that? A rhesus, rhesus monkey. It's the type of monkey that they first discovered it in. Uh, and this is where you have your positives and negatives. So you can be, um, you can be positive, which is dominant. So because it's dominant, there's two ways to be positive. And how is that? Plus, plus, or plus, plus. You could be homozygous, or you could be heterozygous. And then the other phenotype is negative. 
in which case, right, you got to have two negatives because that's recessive. So positive, we could say this is dominant. No, I don't think two negatives make a positive in this case. Uh, and this is recessive. So if you wanted to deal with both of these, that would be what type of cross? Dihydrate cross, because you'd be looking at two traits at once. Okay. Uh, if you wanted to look at just them by themselves, we would call that a monohybrid mono cross. Um, and guys, it's, it's really, multiple allele traits are, are not that complicated. They're just like others. The only difference is you've got an extra or two alleles. So for example, let's do a Punnett square. Let's do somebody who is heterozygous type A. And let's say they have children with somebody who is uh, type AB. So I want you to draw in your notes a Punnett square and show me what the Punnett square would look like. Uh, hey, all right, here we go. Um, <laughs> if we look at the blood types, we got type O, we got type, oh my goodness, we got type O, we got type AB, we got type A, and we got type B, right? And what this chart wants to know is who can donate to who and who can receive. Uh, so we said the other day that O was what? The universal, universal donor. So that means they can give to type O, they can give to type AB, they can give to type A and type B. So we call them the universal donor. But who can they receive from? Oh. They can only receive from type O. Now what did we call type AB? Universal receiver. The universal acceptor or receiver. Uh, that makes it sound like it's like Deion Sanders, the universal receiver. Anyway. Um, so that means they can get from type O, they can get from type AB, they can get from type A, and they can get from type B. Um, but somebody with type AB, who can they donate to? AB and AB. <laughs> AB and AB? Yeah. There's two ABs? No. <laughs> I think they can donate to type AB only. <laughs> because think about it. If, if they donate to type A... You don't have the B, so it's confirmed. Right. Ty somebody with type A doesn't have B antigens, so they're going to reject the B antigens on the blood, right? right? And if they donate to type B, that person's going to reject the type A antigens. What's that word that starts with a C? Can donate? Oh, can donate to? Oh, it's just in the air. Let's think about somebody type A. Who can somebody who's type A, who can they donate to? A and AB. All right, they can donate to A, and they can donate to AB. How is that possible when they can't? Because if I have type A blood, and you have type AB, and I give you my blood, your blood recognizes A blood, and it recognizes B blood because you are AB. So you can take A, and you can take B. Okay, but if you're A, you can take B. If I'm A, I can't take from AB because AB blood has B antigens in it. And I only have A, and so I don't. My body doesn't recognize B. Um, if I'm type B, who can I donate to? Oh wait, I forgot. Receive. Who can type A receive from? A. All right, they can get from A and from O. Remember, anybody can get from O, because O is the universal donor. Because O has no antigen, so nobody's body is going to recognize it as being bad or foreign or whatever. Uh, if I'm type B, who can I donate to? B and AB. All right, good. I can donate to B and I can donate to AB. And I can receive from BO. BO, I can receive from body odor, right? BO. 